Hello and welcome to our new series of video podcasts on the Welsh Premiership with some special guests including players, past players and coaches. Uh, I'm your host Hayden Evans and I'm back with my course mates uh, Adam Cleary and Tobias Hunt and today we're joined by a Premiership legend in ex, now ex, Llandovery number 8 captain Richard Brooks. Uh, first and foremost we'd like to send our condolences to the family and friends of Anthony Maynard who recently passed away at the age of 59. Richard, I know you knew Anthony and you'd like to say a few words. Yeah, I knew Anthony very well. I was, I was very fond of him. I always used to um, look forward to the end of matches and he'd be in the bar in Llandavi and we'd talk the match through and he followed his boys, uh, Tom Scott and Jack, all up and down the country following on sports. I know they're all very, very good cricket players and uh, obviously Scott and Jack are very good players and, and he's very, very proud of his boys and I know the boys have made some great memories and they've got a lot to reflect on with Anthony and um, so obviously everyone from Clan Dubry and I'm sure the Welsh Premiership wish uh, Jack and Scott all the best and send uh, sincere condolences to, to everyone there. Um, if anyone knows Scott or Jack, um, you know how nice boys they are and um, you can just tell that as soon as you speak to their dad I've never heard anyone say a bad word about him, but his boys and his family, he's a proper family man. Um, and, and them three boys meant everything to him. And um, it's very, very sad to see him go. He was diagnosed with cancer um, back in September, I think. And uh, he fought, fought really hard and um, thought he was going to pull through it. But um, he just um, sort of had to let go in the end. And I know the boys are very thankful of uh, what the memories people have been saying about him. So he's going to be greatly missed on Llandovery and Duncan Athletic, where I know he's very uh, highly thought of also. Yeah, desperately sad, isn't it, um, for the boys. But uh, luckily they're in a good place and there is that um, arm of rugby. Uh, they have a lot of friends and there's um, a lot of people that will be there to support them. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so um, first and foremost, how's lockdown been for you? Have uh, you been working from home or have you uh, been furloughed? Or? No, I'm, I'm lucky enough to, to be working from home. Um, I'm a team manager with Sky, so I've got about 24 engineers that I look after to, and they've still been out in the field as well. Um, so I've been working from home as well as my wife's been working from home. Um, but it was good at the start. It was nice to sort of spend some time with the family. Um, sort of homeschooling, uh, trying to homeschool as best we could. We've got a one-year-old and a four-year-old. Uh, we didn't get we didn't get very far with the homeschooling, and he's watching a lot of iPad, uh, a lot of TV, a lot of Paw Patrol and PJ Masks and stuff like that. Um, so you can only play with them for so many hours of the day, and sometimes you just got to let them learn from the television. But my my oldest boy, he's four, he's really starting to feel it now. He's uh, we miss his friends and just wants to go back to school and hug his grandparents. But um, the only thing you can tell them at that age is, oh, no, there's germs and you can't see your friends at the minute, but soon you will. And just just, just try and support them as best you can. But we found it difficult now. And um, But like I said, I'm one of the lucky ones who work, still work from home. I know there's a lot of other people who aren't in as lucky position as I am. So, yeah, I've kept busy. Yeah, um, are you managing to try and stay match fit? Obviously, there's a chance that you won't get to play until... January now at the earliest, born in mind. Um, so yeah, you're trying to keep fit. Were you relaxing after you know, retiring from semi-pro um, rugby? I took about two or th three weeks, sort of, sort of completely off. Uh, it, it came at a decent time in my back and weeks off. Uh, I'm lucky enough; I've got a, a pretty decent gym in my garage, which I'm in almost every morning or most days. Um, I got some good stuff there and I'm probably like, stronger than I've actually ever been and playing, which is a shame actually. And I'm, I'm, my fitness is you know, pre pretty good. Um, so if we were to start the season very soon, I'd be happy. But like you said, I can't, you know, and who knows what the league structure is going to be like there and what, what type of games we're going to be playing. Uh, moving on and to talk about retirement, um, what was the main factors in you retiring from same pro rugby? Uh, a couple of things from my boyhood club, uh, Born Mine. I, I played there. So I said I was going to go back to where I um, play as often as I can. One of the reasons that the pressure was just it was just taking its toll on me, to be honest. I, I was starting to struggle um, fitness wise. Um, I've always been sort of prided myself on 
being able to, to go 80 minutes uh, as often as I can. And I did that quite often. Uh, and it's just sort of taken its toll on me. Um, I've had three knee operations. Luckily, it's just been cartilage and been clean outs, but uh, my back's been starting to play up and I find myself on the, the physio bed almost every week. Um, and that's something I never used to do. So um, although I probably still think I could play at that standard, I, I think I felt that last season I played, I was more of a strain on the, the team and I was given too many penalties away because I wasn't being able to train as hard because I was unfit. Um, so that's that's probably the big thing. Uh, I've also got two kids and, and a wife that I wanted to spend more time with, and um, my my job is, is is taking over a lot of that time as well. So instead of trying to do all of them things, you know, I was trying to do all of them things badly. Um, so um, family and work have to come first in a way. But I, I love my time in the Drovers. It was the best best rugby I've ever been involved in. Best rugby I've played myself and. Uh, I'm, I'm gutted, gutted to be leaving it, to be honest with you, but I think now is the right time for me to, to go. And on and by the Drovers as well, um, how tough was it after nine years of the club, becoming a bit of a legend there? How tough was it to leave them? Very, very, very. And it's, it's quite an emotional sort of decision I had to make. I had to, my wife's actually from Flandavri and she, she was the, chairman's, uh, the chairman at the time's niece, so I sort of fell in love with her. Um, down there and we've had two two kids so that I, I owe a lot to the club not just on the field but off the field also and what, what a great rugby club it is I've always thought and um, I'll be honest when I when I signed down there originally I thought oh, I'll play a couple of years down here and then hopefully someone like Swansea or Neath would pick me up and I could be closer to home but I fell in love with the club and it's 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 a real real rugby club and, and one of the last real rugby clubs left probably in the premiership the, the junior teams and youth teams and the best thing about the club is after the game, if you win, lose or draw, play badly, the supporters will always want to come up and talk to you uh, and buy you a pint or whatever. And, and they're just so nice. They don't care about the result. They're just happy that you've, you've given everything on that field. Yeah. And um, obviously when you made the announcement, was there, how did your teammates find out? Did you tell a few or the coaching staff first or did they uh, at the same time? A few boys. You know, I, I've always had a few little digs from the supporters and the players saying, you know, when are you going to retire and, you know, how many games have you got left in you? Um, but uh, obviously we've got a WhatsApp group and I, first of all, I spoke to Ayi Ross about it. Um, I spoke to my wife as well, but I spoke to my, my brother's the uh, strength and conditioning coach with Van Bovary, so he had a lot of uh, opinion in it. Um, he wanted me to stay, to be honest, but he understood my reasons. Uh, I spoke to Ayi Ross. Um, obviously, yeah, he's a little bit disappointed that um, we couldn't we couldn't carry on, um, and then I sort of broke it to the boys in our little you know private WhatsApp yeah. group. There, and they've all been really supportive, and I'm sure some of them are glad to see the back of me. To be honest, <laughs> and do you feel at all maybe you could have gone on for another year or so as more of a squad player, or was this the right decision? Do you think? Uh, I I as much as it would be nice to think, uh, maybe I can be the sort of old head of the team and come on the last twenty minutes yeah. to maybe sit things down or whatever. I've if, if I train, you know, I want to play and I, I want to start. I'm quite selfish like that. And I wouldn't be a very good squad player. Um, and there's so, much, there's so much talent coming through. Obviously, the guy who has a connection with the Galaxy guy, he likes to bring those boys. Uh, there's guys waiting in, just wearing out my boots to step in and, and take on the rings and I really, really wish them all the best and I'll be down to watch as much as possible um, whenever I can. So, um, keeping with Lantern Free then, you've mentioned um, uh, how good of a club it is and how much of a real rugby club it is. Um, who are the, some of the characters you'll miss around the club? Um, I'll, miss, I'll miss Anthony off the pitch. No, I'll definitely miss Anthony Maynard. Um, he was... He, always, he used to come on our socials and stuff, especially when we went on Kamar. <laughs> we played Kamar and Quinn's away and uh, he came out with us in the night. Then, as, as much as Scott and Jack forced, tried to tell him not to, he, he snuck out with us and he used to call himself the King of Kamar then. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and on the field, obviously, you've got some really close friends then. A lot of them came to my wedding. Um, obviously, um, Sean Miles is probably the biggest character in the team. He's the hardest trainer. Hard training in the team but he knows how to enjoy himself he uh we had a social uh, night one night in clan and the bus left to go back to you know fleshy and swansea to drop the boys off and 
my mother-in-law just lives just up the road. I want to stay back at the mother in laws who sleep on the sofa. Um, you know, so you in the cup and we had a sofa covered in absolute pedic drawers. <laughs> and they, they, they didn't really care, obviously. Um, obviously, you played in the Premiership for nine years. Uh, who's the best player you've played alongside and who's the best player you've played against? Um, I'd say the best player I played uh, against, there's a lot to choose from, obviously. Um, when Ponty were at their highest, they had the big three in, you know, Dav Lockyer, Dick and Medis and Shell Adam. When they were um, when they were playing well, Ponty were flying. Um, RGC, we've had some good battles against. They've always had a, a good few players and obviously Bortega was very, very influential for them. Um, Ebu Vale have always been a big, big team for again to play Clandovery against. We've always had some really, really good battles and the form book out of the window. Um, we always used to have some really good games and the respect shown between two teams after the game has always been great. But so I'd probably say two Ebu Vale players I always found difficult to play against was Ronnie Kynes. Um, he wasn't just a you know a line out you know option, uh, you know, that driving line out scoring guy. He was uh, around the field and he tackled his heart out. And then the other one would be Cam Regan, um, who doesn't look like much. You know, he's not the biggest, he's not the quickest, but when he carries that ball, he carries, you know, with purpose and really hard to bring down. And he's knocked me over a few times. I've just managed to sort of scrag onto his boot laces. But I'd probably say Ronnie and uh, Cam Regan uh, uh, are probably the two toughest players. Uh, with them is... Um, um, best player I've played with, obviously, Wyn Jones has, got, has gone on to great things and I'm sure he's going to become a lion um, and a few others off my tongue Jack Maynard has been superb James Garland uh, Will Thomas um, but the, the number one player I've played with is uh, definitely Lee Reese Scrappy um, just the best player immensely fit great pass and you know when, when he's playing well the Drovers are playing well and he actually went on you know took a little six month sabbatical and went to Australia to visit his missus who's a doctor last season and you know so that kind of affected us big time the way we play is all developed around scrappy he sort of determines the pace of the game so we really miss him when he when he's not there um so i definitely say lee reese for the best player yeah and then following on from my last question who's the best team you've come up against because obviously you've got pontypris who were the top team between like 2012 2016 then murtha sort of took over and now it seems to be cardiff so who would you say is the best team in my what sort of era that you've come up against? Yeah, it's always them sort of um, the Merth and Pontypris, the valley they got up there, and they got some big, big boys. Um, I probably go with the Pontypris team from around 2011 to 2014, where at Pontypris you couldn't you couldn't beat them. It was you know you you were beat before the, the game started. I remember we went up there in a cup game and we had a really good strong team going up, and it was a quarter final of the cup and. They were flying in the league and I, I Ross the coach gave a massive speech before the game and you know it almost brought people to tears and got the butterflies going and we thought we're going to take these boys here and we went out and they beat us somewhere like 41-3 so we had no chance so when they were flying they, they were they were they were unbeatable and um what's your opinion on the regional youngsters playing in the premiership because over the years land have had quite a few we've had like just off the top of my head now Corey Baldwin now he's moved to Exeter from the Scarlet. Even people like Wynne Jones who have like come through and played for Flandovery uh, and then moved up to play for the Scarlets. And you know, the Premiership gets a bit of unfair stick of some media outlets saying, you know, they're better off playing like regional under 23 tournaments. So, you know, what's your opinion on that and like the regional players playing for the Premiership? Well, my honest opinion on the under 23 league is it's, got a, it's not working. Let's, let's scrap it. Let's not try and play against, uh, you know, the. the the second teams from the England list. There's, you know, there's four regions and what twelve Premiership teams. So they should be these regions should be back in these Premiership teams, and the academy boys need to be playing in that Premiership against against old heads, against thirty year olds, scrummaging against experienced props. If they're playing in the under twenty three league, they're just going to be playing against kids, which they've sort of done all their playing against people their own age. So I, I don't really like that league. They should scrap it. Clandovery have had plenty of academy boys come through and go further, but it's getting less and less. Mm. And uh, when they do supply them with us, they, they they sort of stop them sometimes. On the, and they, they say you play for play for a month, and then you'll have a month break to do some conditioning and put some weight on and stuff. And 
the boys need to play rugby, you know, that's the only reason you're going to get better at playing rugby. If you want to do powerlifters, then get them in the gym, but these are rugby players and I think the game is going sort of too far that way. Yeah, and I think at one point last season, you even had Sam Hidalgo Klein playing for you. Uh, I don't know if he played many games, but what was that like, you know, having a Scottish international playing for Thunderbury? You know, no one would have expected that at the start of the season when he joined the Scarlets. Yeah, a couple of years ago that was. And uh, to be honest, I, I, I always think about when pros drop down from Scarlets to, to play for us. The first thing I think is they don't want to be here. They, they're not going to push it in. You know, they've, got no, you know, they've got no reason to care for this rugby club. But I think every, almost every um, uh, professional player that's dropped down has been uh, outstanding. And, and the Scottish international, uh, Sam, I can't remember his surname, he just said, but I do remember him being really, really feisty. And, and we played bedwas, I think, and they kept late hitting him off the ball. And, stuff like that. and you know, I'd think he'd, you know, fake an injury and walk off. But I tell you, he, got, he probably got stuck in. I was really proud. So, obviously, he's gone on now to, he's in France, is he? Yeah, I think he's at Racing. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so all the best. Um, obviously, this year, you finished uh, in fourth with Shanda Obviously, uh, didn't get to finish the season. But, uh you're only a few points behind third place, Abraham. Do you think you could challenge the top three at all? Um, it's a tough one to say, really, because Cardiff, are, you know, we're losing games towards the end of that season. And um, I'm not going to say we, we could have caught them. I think Cardiff were the best team in the league, and, and rightly so. But they had a great squad. Um, I don't think anyone would have, would, have, would have caught them. But they were starting to lose games. And... There was plenty to play for. I, I like to think we could have finished second. Um, we beat we beat Quinns recently, then we beat Merthyr. You know, we still had Ponty and Cardiff to play and Aberavon. But um, we like, I, you know, I, I'm confident to say that if the season carried on, we we were hitting a bit of form. Lee Reese had just returned from Australia, so it was, um, you know, I, I'd like to say we could have finished second. But I think Cardiff deserve, um, and I think they deserve to be given the league title as well. Um, uh, also, do you have any standout matches from this season at all, or your time in the Premiership? Look back on probably say one of the best matches you've played in. Ooh, um, one of the, be the best performances I've had this year is when we played Bridgend away, um, and I managed to get my hands on the ball quite often. But I always loved playing Swansea. Um, obviously, that's my hometown, and they, they never really looked at me and. We never really interested in me when I when I was younger playing for Borney growing up and it's the team I wanted to be playing for. Um, I used to support the Whites, um, you know, almost every week. Um, but they, they never showed any interest of me. So I've always had that like, nice little edge against uh, Swansea and a couple of my good friends played for them. So, so it was nice to beat them. And it was actually my last game with Llandovery, um before the season just ended recently. Um, yeah. It was a good performance. And it was a good game overall. And um. We're hearing reports the uh, season won't be slammed back till at least January, but if season does go ahead next year, what do you think of the Drovers' chance for the league title? Well, I've been quite sort of vocal about it on, on Twitter, about the way I'd like to see the season restructured. I'd yeah. definitely, who's going to start? I'd like to see a January and February pre-season, um, and then the season run from March till October, and then November, December be that off-season. Um, a lot, of, you know, a lot of people disagree with the summer rugby and saying the pitches are too hard, etc. But I'm sure there's ways we can do and things to implement around that. Um, people are saying cricket's not the, you know, that'll affect cricket, but that's really cricket's thing to worry about if they need to make their sport more attractive. But I think summer rugby is the way forward. Um, it's definitely, you know, it's going to improve. And if summer rugby does come, I definitely think the Drovers would finish uh, top of the league. Because um, that's one Achilles heel we've always been is, and um, we don't like playing in the mud, the mud and the ring. Um, but, uh, and uh, obviously, my brother's uh, still coach down there. He's moved from um, strength and conditioning coach now up to uh, skills and attack coach. Um, so that's that's that's. I've got a little bit of inside information about some of the players they've signed, and it's looking really really exciting. And. Um, if they can keep them all fit, I think they'll be challenging um, right up there with the big boys again. Um, also as well this year, you, along with the first land every players, were voted in the fans' team of the season. Um, what does that mean to you? And also, how good have the Drovers fans been over the years? Oh, they've, been, they've been brilliant to me. I've, uh, I can't, can't speak highly enough of them. They, you know, these people 
you know, they, they, they spend, they spend a lot of money traveling up and down that M4, following us around the grounds, you know, sponsoring games and season tickets, or whatever. But, um, when you do go up to places like Bedwas and Cross Keys on a Thursday or Wednesday night, then, you know, and you hear the drovers people, you, you just got to appreciate you know, they I, I absolutely love this sport and they love this team and they love the town of Slandovery and it's, it's an honor to sort of play for them then. Uh, and then the team of the year thing there, I was uh, some good fun. I don't know. I don't think it's exactly as accurate that you know, I certainly wouldn't have put myself at number eight, but I've got a lot of friends and uh, they helped me out there on that. Uh, so you had uh, two retreats from uh, Brooks's along the way. <laughs> That's just up the bottom line. Yeah, the, the bottom line boys helped me out there, but you know, if you not be the best player, but I've got, got the most friends, so I'm happy with that. Well, for a bit of fun to finish, Shane, um, we've got a few questions for you. You can maybe give us insight to some of the players you played with, but um. With your time with Sandavri, who's the best drinker in the squad? Oof. It's got to be the man with the biggest drum, Barry and Watkins. <laughs> um, the worst dressed? My brother is probably up there. He's terrible at sense of dress. <laughs> I've got to say Scott Maynard. Sorry, Scott, mate, but uh, skinny jeans does done, done do a few, mate. <laughs> um, who's the changing room DJ? Ah, clear green, a youngster, clear green, a tight dead prop. He's just moving the card if next season he is, unfortunately, but he's, he's probably going to go to big things. But yeah, he's, he's a man. You know, first on the youngster's music? Or? I like about everything, to be honest with you, but um, I, honestly, it depends what kind of mood I'm in. I was in the gym earlier and I was listening to Meatloaf and I had <laughs> whatever. Uh, who's the biggest liability on the night out? Oh, Jack Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Jones is um, a feisty one, and he's feisty enough on the pitch, but as soon as you get a few beers down with him, he's punched about four drovers, boys. <laughs> have you had to back him out of a few situations before? Oh, I don't care. I'll even crack on. Well, I think he'd have an idea if he would to crack on, but no, he's, uh, oh, he's just angry, and he always gets in arguments, and then he throws a, he swings one, so but he's a good boy. He's got a good heart, and he's, uh, I think he's going to be drovers captain next week, or him or Lee Reese, or, or you know. Both of them are good decisions, they're really good. And if you were stuck on a desert island, which teammate would you mo well, most want to be with and who you wouldn't want to be with? Oh. Most want to be with. I don't, remember Luke Lewis, the old, our old Flandubbery hooker? He yeah. Captain, he captained us when we won the Swillet Cup. Definitely go with him, you want, you want him by your side. Although, yeah, he's going to burn, he's a binge, so he, he's probably going to burn. But uh, he's a fun boy and he, he's got some good stories. So probably Luke Lewis for that. And then um, you don't want to be with Rodri Jones just because uh, when he takes his top off, I'll have to keep my T-shirt on uh, all the time. Right? And <laughs> he's, like a, he's like a Spartan warrior, honest to God. And uh, you know, he's the most handsome bloke in uh, Welsh rugby. He's been nominated. But when he takes his top off, Jesus. Oh, uh, uh, great. Um We've ended up with a man down here then somehow, a few a few difficulties, but uh, it's all we've got time for this week, so thank you Richard for joining us. Cheers. Um, we'll be back in another two weeks with a new guest and we hope you all enjoy it, so uh, thank you.